Good morning and welcome to our Sunday School and Worship Time here at Freedom Baptist Church on our YouTube channel. We are so happy to have you with us today. I'm Pastor Bill and it's Independence Day or 4th of July weekend. Everyone is welcome to join us, so pause the video and go get your family members. But if it's just you, we're so happy to have you with us today. For birthdays and anniversaries, who has a birthday this week? Of course, our nation, the United States of America, and we're celebrating that this weekend. Also, Brian Tracy had a birthday as well. So happy birthday, and if you had an anniversary, happy anniversary to you. So, have you wished happy birthday to America? Well, some may feel ashamed or embarrassed to celebrate our nation's birthday because of the failures and the grievous acts of the past and present. But you know what? We can be thankful for the many blessings and freedoms we have in this land. We can be thankful for the justice that has been set forth. As Christians, we must continue to pray for our leaders and our nation to repent and turn to the Lord. We, as Christians, must live the love and light of Jesus Christ consistently before others, making a difference in our nation. We need to keep praying. We need to keep honest and be right and stand for justice and love one another. May this be a day of thanksgiving, this weekend be a weekend of thanksgiving, but may it also be a weekend of prayer and repentance. Jesus is the only hope for our nation. Do you believe that? Let me say it again. According to God's word, Jesus is the only hope for our nation. You are seeing in the picture several images of, um, of our nation's flag. And as I mentioned a few weeks ago, for many, the flag can be a symbol of, uh, the flag is a symbol of pride and freedom, reminding us of blessings we have in this nation and the memory of those who sacrifice their lives for our freedom. For others, it is a reminder of injustice and failure. So who is right? Well, as I mentioned two weeks ago, Pastor Dan and I uh, often sing a song around this time called the red, white, and blue. And in the lyrics, the lyrics talk about what the colors of the American flag represent. Red is for blood of patriots who have died to free us. White is for justice and government of law. Blue is for honor and faith in all we do. When we look at the American flag, let's remember these principles of sacrifice, justice, honor, and faith. Let's be thankful to God for allowing us to live in the United States of America and for the many freedoms he has given us. But also when we see our flag, let's remember to pray for our nation, for we have turned against God. There are many injustices that have been committed in the past and that are being committed in the present. Let's pray for revival in our nation and in our churches. And may each of us be committed to living, to, uh, to live out uh, Christ's loving, courageous example and be the example that he wants each of us to be. May we stand for justice and what is right. So, would you join me in singing Our Land of Liberty? And if you have a flag, you can wave it along. The second verse is actually a prayer. So let's sing together. Our land. 
this morning and turn to Psalm chapter 33. Psalm chapter 33. And we're going to be looking at verse 12. Verse 12. This particular verse in this psalm, it reads like a proverb or a wise saying for the children of Israel at this time of writing, but also a, like a proverb for you and I today, for those who are reading and listening. Let me read this verse for you. You follow along and I'll read it. Psalm 33, 12. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. Let me read it again. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. This verse, our passage is commonly and, and regularly read in churches uh, during Fourth of July weekend. It is often on church signs and billboards around that time. So what is this verse saying? Blessed or happy is the nation whose God is the Lord. You realize that everyone has a God. Oh, Pastor Bill, I don't have little idols. Well, everyone has a God. Everyone worships something. Even the atheist who says they don't believe in God, they are still worshiping um, the idea of themselves or a, an ideology that does involve worship. And um, blessed is the nation who makes the Lord their God. Now, the word for Lord in this verse uh, in our English translations, you'll see all capital letters. That means it is the Hebrew word that was the holiest name for God. In fact, when they would write this word down, they just used the four consonants. They didn't use vowel pointings. They didn't even want to pronounce it because it was the holiest name for God. Um, uh, when we see it in our uh, uh, translations, we can, uh, sometimes it's called Jehovah because they take the vowel pointings of another word for God, Adonai, and put it into the holiest name for God and then they would get the word Jehovah. But for the Hebrew people, this, they were worshiping the one true God. And people may have lots of choices and they may have uh, of lots of freedom to, to choose who they want to worship, but there's only one true God. And Psalm 33 tells us that blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. So we're talking about the one and only true God. Now, in the context of this verse, what nation had God chosen for his own inheritance? Which nation was it? Well, as we read in the Bible, there was one nation that he chose. He chose Abraham and promised Abraham numerous descendants, and that and though that those descendants became the children of Israel. They were God's chosen people. Was Israel a blessed nation? Yes. How was Israel blessed? Let's list some of the ways. Can you think of some of the ways that Israel was a blessed nation? Shout them out among your families. How did God bless Israel? Okay, hopefully you shared several things there. First of all, what do we think of? They were delivered out of bondage and slavery from Egypt. What else? God took care of them in the wilderness. How? What did he use? He used manna and quail. He provided guidance for them. How did God guide them in the wilderness? Cloud by day, pillar of fire by night. How else did he bless them? He gave them the law through Moses. He uh, had them 
build the tabernacle and provided a worship system. He promised them a land and he took them into that promised land and gave them victory over the peoples of the land. When enemies turned against them, he raised up deliverers. He raised up prophets to speak his truth and to remind them to turn back to the Lord. He raised up kings. Some of them were godly kings to lead them. And most of all, he gave them mercy and deliverance even after their failures. So this verse obviously has application to Israel. Israel was so blessed, but they received greater blessings when they truly worshipped their one God. But even with all their blessings, did they always follow God? No, they, keep, they kept disobeying. They kept following after other gods, and they went their own way, and God would have to, do, to discipline them, but yet he never completely destroyed them. He was going to keep his promises to them. So, yes, there's an application to Israel. But many read this verse as a principle and challenge for the United States of America. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And it does have an application for any nation. Any nation in our world today who follows the God of the Bible, I believe, is going to be a blessed nation. They may face consequences and persecution, but I believe they would be a blessed nation. Has America ever been a nation who has made God, the God of the Bible, her God? Now, this would be, this is a question that would take probably quite a bit of debate, and people may argue over this, and it's not my point to start an argument here today. The United States of America was built upon foundational biblical principles and truths. But listen to me clearly for those who might be uh, rejecting that statement or uh, denying it. It was built upon foundational principles and truths. But that does not mean that every action that took place in the founding and growing of our nation followed God's word. And it doesn't mean that we as a nation faithfully follow the God of the Bible. We have had government leaders that sought the Lord for wisdom. We have taught the Bible in our schools, but we have also rejected God's truth. We have also not followed God faithfully for the over 200 years that our nation has been in existence and the couple hundred years where the, our nation was developing um, uh, the colonies and so forth, developing into a nation. So there have been many errors and grave sins against God and others. But we can see that the blessings America has received, I believe, has been a gift from God. There have been wise and good choices we have made. There have been people that have stood for right and justice. And I believe there have been blessings because of that. But yet, and, and, and many times we haven't, yet God still showed us mercy. But the division we face today is a continued consequence of the sin of our nation. And... Uh, the sin of a church or the sin of individuals. So as we look at this truth, do we believe it? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And if we believe it, how are we responding to this truth? Are we honest with it? There are blessings that come from following God and God alone. But is that what we're doing? Maybe many of us would say, oh yes, Pastor Bill, I am. Or maybe we'd say this, yes, America is a godly nation. But let's examine our hearts and be honest with the truth. For the little, uh, for the remainder of our Sunday school lesson this morning, I want to look briefly at the example of Israel. And one specific nation where a king was saying that he and the people 
were following God. And he was condemning another nation and king who was not following God. Yet that king was not being honest with where he and his kingdom were. Do any of you have an idea of which king I'm talking about? Well, turn to 2 Chronicles 13. 2 Chronicles 13. This uh, map here is a map of the United Kingdom of Israel under King Saul and King David, the first two kings. This is what the kingdom of Israel looked like with all 12 tribes. But after King David, Solomon, his son, reigned. And Solomon was considered the wisest man to ever live. And he was a great king. The kingdom was very powerful. But in his older years, remember, he had many wives. And those wives followed other gods. And Solomon's heart was turned away from the Lord. And God was angry. And God promised to judge Solomon and Israel. And he was going to divide the kingdom. But he didn't do it in Solomon's days. It was in the days of his son Rehoboam. Rehoboam became king. And Rehoboam didn't listen to the advice of the senior advisors. He listened to the friends he grew up with. And they told him to be hard on all of Israel. And the northern tribes revolted under King Jeroboam. So Jeroboam reigned in the north, the northern ten tribes of Israel. But King Rehoboam still reigned over the two southern tribes, the main tribe of Judah and the smaller tribe of Benjamin. So the kingdom was divided and that was a consequence. And here is where our example takes place. Look at 2 Chronicles 13, uh, verses, 1, uh, verses 1 through 4. Now in the 18th year of King Jeroboam began Abijah to reign over Judah. He reigned three years in Jerusalem. His mother's name was Micaiah, the daughter of Uriel of Gibeah. And there was war between Abijah and Jeroboam. And Abijah set the battle in array with an army of valiant men of war, even 400,000 chosen men. Jeroboam also set the battle in array against him with 800,000 chosen men, being mighty men of valor. And Abijah stood up upon Mount Zemaraim, uh, which is in Mount Ephraim, and said, Hear me, thou Jeroboam and all Israel. So, what do we have going on here? We have King Abijah of Judah. And he was going to war against the king of Israel, Jeroboam. And he had a mighty army, and Jeroboam had a mighty army. And what do you think happened? Well, we see here, Abijah gets up on a mountain and he calls out to the king and he has something to say. Let's see what Abijah says in verses 5 through 9. Ought ye not to know that the Lord God of Israel gave the kingdom over Israel to David forever? even to him and to his sons by a covenant of salt? Yet Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, the servant of Solomon, the son of David, is risen up and hath rebelled against his Lord. And there are gathered unto him vain men, the children of Belial, and have strengthened themselves against Rehoboam, the son of Solomon, when Rehoboam was young and tender-hearted and could not resist them. And now ye think to withstand the kingdom of the Lord in the hand of the sons of David. And ye be a great multitude, and there are with you golden calves which Jeroboam made you for gods. Have ye not cast out the priests of the Lord, the sons of Aaron, and the Levites, and have made the priests after the manner of the nations of other lands? 
so that whosoever cometh to consecrate himself with a young bullock and seven rams, the same may be a priest of them that are no gods. So what is Abijah saying here? Is he saying anything that's wrong? He is speaking out to the king of Israel and the tribes and saying, God intended Israel to be under David, but you guys rebelled. And Jeroboam set up calves and you followed after idols and you kicked out the priests, the Levites, out of your land. And they did. And where did the Levites go? They went down to Judah. And everything Abijah is saying here so far is true. Israel had rejected God. They had turned away as they were about to go to war. Now, look what he says in verses 10 through 12. Abijam continues, But as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. And the priests which minister, which minister unto the Lord are the sons of Aaron, and the Levites wait upon their business. And they burn unto the Lord every morning and every, and every evening burnt sacrifices and sweet incense. The showbread also, and he continues to talk about how their priests worship and serve the Lord. And behold, God himself is with us, in verse 12, for our captain and his priests with sounding trumpets to cry alarm against you. O children of Israel, fight ye not against the Lord God of your fathers, for ye shall not prosper. So what is the king of Judah doing, Abijah? He is calling out and saying, you guys aren't following God, but we are. Our priests are doing it right. So don't fight against the Lord in this battle. He wanted to lead all of Israel. He wanted to be the king over all. But was what Abijah was saying true? In verse 10, as for us, the Lord is our God, and we have not forsaken him. Is that true? Had Judah not forsaken God? Well, let's look back at a few verses. 1 Kings 15 and verses 1 and 3. Now, in the 18th year of King Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, reigned Abijah over Judah. And he walked in all the sins of his father, which he had done before him. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord his God, as the heart of David his father. What do these verses say? Had Abijah followed God? No. And if you look back in 1 Kings chapter 14, verses 21 through 24, you'll see that Rehoboam, his father, didn't follow God. And it describes how evil, wicked men did abominable things, and Israel, tur or Judah, turned from God and did not follow God. And it was almost worse than Israel, than the wickedness of Israel. So in 2 Chronicles 13 here, Abijah, the king of Judah, is not being honest. They haven't followed God either. So, you guys, Israel, are not following the Lord, but we are. Don't fight against God. But Judah was not following God either. So who is going to win this battle? Well, in the meantime, in verse 13, we see Israel start to do something. Okay, let's look at verse 13. But Jeroboam caused an ambush, an ambushment to come about behind them. So they were before Judah, and the ambushment was behind them. And when Judah looked back, behold, the battle was before and behind, and they cried unto the Lord, and the priests sounded with the trumpets. Then the men of Judah gave a shout, and as the men of Judah shouted, it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah. 
So what do we see happening? Israel and Jeroboam go for an ambush. And they get in front and behind of the king of Judah. And all of a sudden, Judah notices it. And what does Judah do? They realize they're in trouble. Do they run away? No, they cry out to God for help. Now, why did Judah cry to God? Judah talked about following God, but they weren't following the one true God. They were going their own way. In that moment, they knew going their own way wasn't helping. They knew that only God could help them. And what did God do? Did he laugh at them and tell them, you help yourself? And did he let them get destroyed? Not in this passage. Let's, we just saw God smoke Jeroboam in Israel. And let's see what he does. Verse 16 through 18. And the children of Israel fled before Judah. And God delivered them into their hand. And Abijah and his people slew them with a great slaughter. So there fell down slain of Israel 500,000 chosen men. Thus the children of Israel were brought under at that time, and the children of Judah pre prevailed because they relied upon the Lord God of their fathers. So Judah was in trouble. They cried to God, and God gave them the victory over Israel. And Israel started running away, and they got defeated. But Judah prevail. Why? Because they were stronger? No. Because they relied upon God. What do we see going on here in this passage? We see two nations that were not following God. And there was one ungodly king, Abijah, who acted like they were. Pretending that they were, but he wasn't living in reality. And we really don't see anything in this passage where he cries to God for help. Or where the king follows God faithfully. But we see Judah, some of the men, some of the people, crying out to God for help. How does this apply to you and me? Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Is our nation following God? No, not as a nation. What should the response of our nation be? We need to turn from our sin and turn to God. God's answer to Solomon in the prayer of dedication of the temple in 2 Chronicles 7, 14 goes like this, and I'm sure you're familiar with this verse. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. We need to pray for America. America needs to turn and repent. How does America do that? Our leaders need to be saved. The people of America, Christians, churches, need to stand for God and vote according to righteousness and justice. We need to stand for what is right. But what about you and me individually? Do we tell others that we are Christians? Are we honest with ourselves and others? You know, we can't fool God. He knows. Others can see the example of our lives. They can see that it either matches what we say or that it completely contradicts. So what does God want from each of us today? He wants us to humble ourselves before him in repentance and faith. Beloved, if you have never put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, you are a sinner facing death and separation from God forever and ever. But Jesus, God loved you so much that he sent his son Jesus to die on the cross for your sins, to pay your penalty. And he wants you to come 
to Him today. Would you come to Jesus today? Call upon Him. Admit you're a sinner. Believe that He died, to you, died for you. Call on Him to save you. Receive Him by faith. Turn from your sin. If you have any questions about this, please go to our website and find out how you can contact us and we would love to share with you more about that. But let's remember, blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. Blessed is the person whose God is the Lord. Not just saying it, but living it. Oh, let's remember Jesus is our only hope. He is the only hope for this nation. So let's seek Him first today. Too often we're busy about who is going to be king. We, we're focusing on, I want to be king of my life. I want to be in control. Let's let Jesus be our king. Let's make Him the king of our lives. Let's put Him first. Let's do that as a nation. Let's do that individually. Would you sing with me this wonderful little chorus from Patch the Pirate? And um, we have never sung this before that I'm aware of, so you might be learning it. And um, But we will sing this again um, at, at other Sunday school times, and so hopefully you will get it down. But if you know it, sing it. If not, listen and learn it with us. study at 6 p.m. If you need to know how to work the Zoom or how all that works, please contact me or Pastor Dan. Also, we are planning, hoping to have a college and career Zoom for our college and career and uh, young adults on Thursday at 7 p.m. So stay tuned for that invitation. And if you could just stop in for a little bit, uh, that'll be at 7 o'clock and uh, stop in on your computer a little bit and we'll have a good time of fellowship together. Um, remember, I sent you on email our Freedom Family and Mission prayer calendars for July. We pray for a fam one or two families every day and a missionary every day. So if you did not receive that on email, please let me and we can get that to you. And then let's remember to keep praying for one another. Let's keep praying for our nation. And let's keep praying for wisdom for our leaders as we seek to know when to return back into the church. We need your prayers. Now, does anyone uh, have an idea who our mission's focus of the week is with it being 4th of July weekend? Well, we are focusing on... Eddie and Carol Aleph with V-A-I-B. Now, does anyone know what V-A-I-B stands for? Can you shout it out? 
Virginia Assembly of Independent Baptists. This is an organization that seeks to be a voice for Christian liberties in the Virginia legislature, promoting life, equality, religious freedom, and other biblical values, living out the truth of God's word, standing for and promoting its benefits, every Virginian and person uh, living in our state and nation. So this benefits everyone. Eddie spends a lot of time in our capital, in Richmond. He interacts with the Virginia State congressmen and congresswomen and their staff, finding out about bills, what he calls the good bills and the bad bills in relation to biblical truths and informing our churches. So please go to their website, vaib.org, and sign up for their update emails, sign up for their capital alerts, and you can find out when certain votes are going on and how to contact your senators and representatives. He continually updates us on the pro-life and abortion legislation being presented. He also continually updates us on bills related to religious freedoms and how certain bills will impact our church. He informs us on a whole host of other related issues, and his most recent update has information on seven laws that just went into effect on July 1st. So how can we pray for the ailers? Well, let's pray for our nation. And let's pray for our state and local leaders and for their salvation and that they will follow God's truth. Let's pray for repentance and revival and unity in our land. Let's pray that our churches and believers would be loving lights for God's truth. Let's pray for safety for the uh, ALIS as they travel and get support and pray that God would provide more support and prayer members for them, for their support team. Let's pray, let's praise the Lord for the improved health for Mrs. Carroll. She had some severe health problems a couple years ago, but she is doing much better, so continue to praise the Lord, but continue to pray for her in that regard. So, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for allowing us to be a part of the United States of America. Lord, regardless of the failure of our nation to follow you, you have blessed our nation, and there have been times where we have stood up for what was right. Lord, would you forgive our nation for turning against you, and would you lead our nation to repentance? Would you get uh, work in the hearts of our president, of all of our congressmen and women, of all of our leaders, state and local and federal, I pray for our Supreme Court that they would stand and make decisions based upon your truth. Father, I pray that we as churches and believers would be consistent and faithful and stand up for what's right. Not just say we're doing it, but actually doing it. Lord, would you help Eddie and Carol as they serve you with the VAIB. Bless this ministry. May they stand for truth. Lord, I pray that you would increase their support and strengthen them. Thank you for the health that you have brought to Miss Carol and continue to provide for her. Lord, would you bless our church? Give us wisdom for when we can return inside. I pray that you would comfort each of our families. Lord, I pray that you would continue to provide for our needs. Bless the offering that has come in today and may you be honored and glorified in all that we do. Lord, we think of our missionaries, the Millers, whose son, Stephen, they found out has tested positive for COVID and he is in Air Force basic training. Lord, would you just uh, strengthen Stephen and help him to recover quickly and may this not uh, be life-threatening. I pray that you would just strengthen that family during this time. Lord, guide in our day. Get a hold of our nation. May we return to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. As we close, we're going to sing a song personally, but we can also sing it for our nation. Lord, I need you. And boy, do we ever. Let's sing.
Thanks for joining us today. God bless you.